Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Knoxville Regional Championship. Immediately, and it's going to be Indy Torkel. I love it. Wow. That is a strong start coming out on Aaron's end here in the grand finals of the Knoxville Regional Championships, pairing off against the Fluttermane and the Palafin. That was the Palafin that was doing the absolute most for Justin in the top four set, making an appearance again. Yeah, this is what I mean, right? Like, Aaron has, like, pretty conventional Pokemon, but, like, Indy Torkel, not a lead most people would go with in that position. And there is the consideration of that Parasol immediately. Oh, I like what Justin is considering here. He's saying, look, you do not have ways to get rid of the trap, right? You cannot switch out with your Pokemon very easily. And so this is something that we actually saw Wolf execute at the uh, regional championship of Square in Orlando. And, you know, these, these Pokemon actually are essentially all very similar to what Wolf had at that tournament. So here we go. Palafin is going to switch immediately. I love that. Very Wolf-esque. I respect it. I respect it. Especially, too, you're saying that you're missing that Parish Song coming out. No swap on the other end. And now it'll be a Pokemon terrestrializing that Torkoal. It's going to be stuck in play, but it's looking to be doing the most of the time out on the field with the fire terrestrialization. You can imagine how things are going to be going next for that. The follow me from the Indeedee to try and keep that Torkoal safe. The thing is, nothing's going to be safe from this Parish Song. Yeah, nothing's going to be safe, but Torkoal is going to be able to get a lot of damage here. Fire, Terra, Boosted, Charcoal, Eruption. In the sun. And it's going to be oh! bringing the Gothitelle right down and the Fluttermane to its sash. Not getting that KO on the Gothitelle. It'll get a little bit health back with that Stitch Fairy. But that is the Pokemon that you need to be taking the KO on if you want the capability to switch your own out. Yeah, so, you know, Aaron in that position theoretically could have gone for like Psychic plus Eruption. You get a little bit of chip damage off onto the Gothitelle and then finish it off with Eruption. But that's obviously really risky if Fluttermane just goes for an attack in that position, right? So now the Parish, of course, is counting down on both ends. However, what makes this actually a little bit tricky is that Gothitelle took so much damage immediately, right? So how are you able to actually finish off this Parish count while trapping your opponent's Pokemon in? So right now, Aaron is free to kind of just keep launching attacks off, and for him, his goal is to ideally knock out Gothitelle or just KO everything next to Gothitelle as quickly as possible while the Parish counts down. Especially, too, with the Psychic Train. You can't be going for a fake out, so it will be the Protect the first time around to make sure the Gothitelle can stay safe for now. Follow me. You're keeping your Torkoal safe, I guess. There's no attack firing off in that direction. So it will be another eruption. The Arcanine, definitely going to take it better than the Fluttermane or the Gothitelle will, but we've got to see how much damage that this Torkoal can oh do. And that goodness. is still so much damage. <laughs> Parish count down to two now. So one thing you could do is protect Arcanine, like switch Gothitelle out into Fluttermane, sacrifice Fluttermane, and then bring Gothitelle back out, protect, that's a double KO. Um, but it looks like the consideration here is to actually just go for damage, but it's a little bit scary, right? If a follow me and eruption comes out, that's just the double knockout, and then Aaron is free to just make the switches afterwards. Yeah, definitely a little bit of a curious situation. The Arcanine will at least stay nice and safe and the Psychic Ooh, no follow me, though. off. No follow, yeah, no follow me. So that will be the Torkoal taking all of that damage. And now again, with the Eruption, sure, theoretically, Eruption is going to do significantly less considering the situation, but that's still so much, and it will be enough to take the Gothitelle down. Yeah, and this is the tough thing about Parish Trap, right? It's like you spend a lot of resources and uh, switches to get the count down, but Gothitelle is no longer around. That's why like, getting that like second to last turn is so crucial with Parish Song. So Trick Room also goes up. So the way Aaron positioned this was so smart. He realizes, okay, I have a lot of offense immediately with NDD plus Torkoal. Now, obviously, it is the final turn of Parish Song, so you might want to consider making those switches. But either way, I thought this was a really fantastically played early game. And for Justin, I think uh, it, it, like you didn't really get that much value out of the Parish Song ultimately. Uh, the question here is whether or not Aaron you know, goes for the switches or maybe actually just sacrifices his Pokemon to get the free switches into whatever he's got in the back, like that Armouge and Iron Hands. Even at the Parish Long, there's no longer the trap forcing the switch here. It looks like only the one is the Torkoal. Oh, oh it's two, Murkrow. But Murkrow coming out. So it could be just the double pivot from this end. No, just oh. the one. So Indeedy going down at the end of the turn. Arcanine with the Protect to make sure that can't get hit in the Psychic, trying to fire off into the slot. So that Indeedy is going to be going down for Free. And now a wave crash. The Palafin in the hero form. <laughs> it's going to be so much damage to bring the Burkrow to Sash. Yeah, so Arcanine there does crucially get another protect off, but 
Yeah, Indy Deeks count will go down to zero. I, I really like that play from Aaron's end because it's like Murkrow, not really that essential at this point in the matchup, so might as well bring it in. If it gets KO'd, perfectly fine. If not, sure. Uh, Indy D here, you know, let me just like sacrifice it. Now I get a free switch and into the Armourouge. Expanding force now, looking so, so strong. If you look at Justin's team, there aren't really answers into Expanding Force. Gothitelle earlier would have been the best Pokemon to resist this attack. There is the Dark Terra Amoongus on Justin's team, but it's not here. And so Armourouge, so well positioned right now to start clicking Expanding Force. And that was the nice thing with the Indeedy. While the Parish Song was happening, just setting the Trick Room up to make sure that once the Pokemon goes down, once there's that swap out, that the Armor Rouge and Kabi could be set up with the best of success. An attempt at a double attack from the Arcanine. You have to respect it, but it's not going to be going this time around. So the Expanding Force will be able to at least hit into that slot and do a bunch of damage. Already took enough before, so the Arcanine's going to go down. Okay, down to the final two Pokemon here. There is no Expanding Force answer though, right? And you know what's so cool about Aaron's team? It's like you've got Murkrow and the double Trick Room. So it's like, okay, after Trick Room's over, well, I could just set up Tailwind and outspeed you as well. So it's kind of this Turbo Room team where it takes advantage of both Tailwind and Trick Room. Now, the key thing is Psychic Terrain has been stalled out, right? And so you can't just click Expanding Force and get a double knockout anymore. And so you'll be dealing less damage. So this is like gonna be a pretty close finish there. Of course, is the free switch into Flutter Main. Just taking some time to consider all the options from both ends right now as uh, Trick Room continues to count down as well. Yeah, the Flutter Main, being able to come back in. I mean, being in the Trick Room, that's uh, not necessarily where you want to be, but the potential to just try and maybe stall something out or maybe just try and call the turn correctly. You do have the priority now back on board with the lack of psychic terrain and with the NDD being KO'd, you know that there's no threat of it on the horizon. So opportunity now for Palafin to try and deal something out, take a KO in this situation. Yeah, the thing here is like Palafin looks pretty bulky, so I'm curious if he can actually survive like that single target Life Orb Expanding Force. The Murkrow switch out here allows the sun to be set up, right? And so you reduce the damage of the opposing water type attacks, which I think is really smart. Uh, and what's interesting here is there's still been no Terra committed on the opposing side or on Justin's side, but there's not really a good position to go for a Terra, right? If you Brass Terra, you actually become weak to the fire type attacks. And so there's Jet Punch on a Torkoal, and it does manage to survive with the Sliver of HP. There is expanding force into the Palafin. Can Palafin survive? It does! Palafin, we've gotten to see it with some clutch revivals earlier on, and it's going to be hanging around for at least another turn of battle. Is now a huge Shadow Ball to take care of this armor rouge. Oh, catch the critical hit there. I think Shadow Ball would have gotten the knockout anyway, but now it's really awkward, right? Aaron is stuck with this Murkrow and the Torkoal, and the Torkoal's already taken so much damage there. So there will, of course, was the ability for armor rouge to target into the Flutter main slot, but maybe reading into a protect from the Flutter main at this point, you know, there is still a little bit of Trick Room left. You could potentially go for that protect. Uh, Palafin could go for a protect of its own or could just go jet for Jet Punch as well. I think either is fine, but I think double protect and then Jet Punch into Murkrow plus uh, Shadow Ball here should secure the first game for Justin. Really well done too. I mean, it looks tricky with the Palafin going up in the sun. That's two battles now in a row where the Palafin's been able to still be able to do something in this sunlight. The double protect should be so good to just make sure to get on through. But what an interesting game too, considering that opened up with the Parish Song and then just forcing the pivots out from Aaron and for Justin to start gaining back a little bit of that momentum. Yeah, I do think if this was Iron Hands instead of Murkrow, I think Aaron would have been in a better spot uh, because Iron Hands just applies more offensive pressure and you obviously can wild charge into the Palafin, whereas like Murkrow was kind of here to soak up damage, but it never really, you know, set up Tailwind. It was here to just absorb one hit and then that's basically it. And so I think, you know, if you're Aaron, you could consider going with the same strategy again. The, the Torbo Indity lead I thought was really smart, but either way, Jet Punch comes out, it's Going to knock out Murkrow. Justin, of course, is one Pokemon away from securing this first game. We know that the Fluttermane is going to be faster. Torkoal was so slow. Shadow Ball comes out, and Justin Tang is one game away from winning this regional championship. And what an incredible win to be up one in the series. And the amount of times that we've talked at the beginning of a match of, hey, maybe this situation doesn't look the greatest for yeah. Justin. Maybe, you know, opponent has an advantage. Look, this isn't, oh, Justin back up against the wall. But every time, finding a way out of the situation. I think 
What was really, really key in that last battle was basically Justin being able to kind of keep his composure because I think the early game, yeah, like the Parish Song went off, but it didn't actually really get knockouts, right, very easily. And, and so like Justin, I feel like was actually playing down a good amount from that early game, but recognizing, okay, I don't, I, even though I didn't get like the free knockouts with Parish Song, I can still win this one. I think with Murkrow being selected instead of the Iron Hands, Aaron had a lot less late game offense. Murkrow just does not really do very much for Trick Room. I think Aaron's decision making and bringing was basically like, you know what? I I can set up Trick Room in this game, or I could go for the potential Tailwind, right? And so, yeah, I think one adaptation could be to just bring out Iron Hands. I think the lack of bringing out Iron Hands is looking at the opposing side, being potentially scared of that, like Arcanine with will o for example, but I don't know. I think Iron Hands uh, would be definitely the adaptation I'd bring over Murkrow if I wanted to go yeah. with like the same combo. You could just go with like Indity Arm Rouge, you know, but I feel like Aaron just refuses to go with that, and for good reason. He's really good with coming up with these like unique leads that people just like don't have, a, have as much experience playing against, and like, I, I thought Indity Torque was actually really brilliant because it did so much damage immediately. Yeah, I'm definitely a fan of the idea of leave Murkrow at home. I feel like Murkrow's strength is when it's up next to something like that Garchomp to be able to enable something to be dealing that bunch of damage. But as soon as it was in a Trick Room situation, I mean, the only thing it's really hitting for damage is that Brave Bird. And at the end of the day, a Murkrow is a Murkrow, you know? It definitely <laughs> has its uses and I definitely respect those uses. But when you're going up against some really powerful Pokemon, well, could be tough. Now game number two in DD Torkoal lead, but a switch up coming up from Justin. It is going to be Gothitelle starting it off next to the Fluttermane. Yeah, and so one of the uh, things about Gothitelle here is that it's actually the Water Terra. So if you go for a Water Terra, obviously Eruption won't deal nearly as much damage. Like the downside last time was Gothitelle kind of just switched in and ate up so much damage. So I like that as an adaptation expecting Torkoal. I think the idea is Justin was like, you know what? I, I could have actually knocked both of your Pokemon out with Perish Song pretty early in the last game. And so this time around, yeah, with the Water Terra, be able to stick around for a lot longer, which I like. And yeah, I think with Perish Song here, you don't have to play the mind game as to whether or not Indy clicks follow me or not. So going straight for the Perish immediately, Aaron's Pokemon are trapped in right now. There is no potential for them to switch out from this Perish Song, which is guaranteed. And the Water Terra here will ensure that Gothitelle does not faint to an eruption. At least having the knowledge from game one about this Parish Song strategy that Justin does have on his side, it does pave the way for Aaron to be making adjustments on his own end to try and make sure he can play out of that a little bit more quickly since the Ndidi with the Follow Me wasn't really doing anything on that first turn. Trasalizations all around though, water on one end and a fire type Torkoal on the other from Aaron. You can only imagine that it's going to be an eruption coming out, but it will be the Follow Me. Valuing, keeping the Torkoal safe, making sure that the eruptions can be going for as much damage as possible. But there it is, again, Parish Song. Yeah, so this time around, I think Justin is way better positioned to go for this early Parish. And yeah, save Follow Me there to make sure you don't eat up a Psychic. Psychic honestly does a ton of damage to Torkoal with the terrain, as we saw previously. So this will be a lot of damage, but of course, the Fluttermane will hang on thanks to the Focus Sash with 1 HP here. Gothitelle taking that so well, though, not even down to half the HP still. It will take a, another hit for anything to be able to happen. And being in such a better situation than that first game, I mean, that is scary for Aaron. Yeah, I think, I mean, for Justin's perspective, you could go for a double protect right now. He's contemplating, looks like, just going for damage, actually, with Psychic and the Moonblast here. Uh, oh, wow, okay, no follow me. That's a very fast-paced turn. Just Moonblast immediately into Indy. Both players know exactly what they want to do. Does get a critical special attack drop. Let's see, but it's Psychic into the Torkoal for now. Bringing it just over half health, and now another round of eruption. Sure, the less amount of HP it does, the Ooh. less and less damage it does, but Gothitelle will still be able to hold on, even despite the critical hit at that point, too. The Fluttermane, of course, since it was just down to the Sash, will be taken out. Yeah, and so fast paced game so far. I think, you know, the idea is to just go with offense immediately, but once again, like now, you, even if you protect this next turn, there is still like one more turn of Parish that potentially has to count down. I think the reality is with you know, Justin losing the Fluttermane, even if Aaron loses both of his Pokemon, this time if you have Iron Hands and Armor Rouge in the back, it's really, really safe to kind of like, you know, get a lot of consistent damage off. And so Palafin comes out kind of in an awkward position right now, but it's a great time to bring it in because it's like, okay, now I can just pivot out into the Arcanine, for example. And so, yeah, I think Justin's looking to just uh, count down the Parish counter for both Pokemon. But the main thing here is Aaron will have a fair amount of turns of Trick Room to work with after Parish is over. And if you did make the adjustment by bringing in Iron Hands, you have a lot of offense, especially with expanding force pressure. And we've seen players struggle to swap into their Trick Room Sweepers after getting the Trick Room set up, but at least the Parish Long. We'll guarantee like, that, yeah. Yeah, you're, sure, two Pokemon of yours just got KO'd, but you get to swap into your Sweepers. Now Arcanine joining the field, the Gothitelle. 
the Protect, of course, to make sure that's going to be making its way on through on into the next turn. And the Eruption now at half health into the Arcanine, not going to be doing nearly as much damage as it would be doing. Yeah, this is going to be a close finish. Man, that's still doing so much damage. As a Psychic does correctly go into that slot as well, you know, covering for Palafin, and man, Everything is getting so low, but the thing is, I could see Palafin as an endgame looking really powerful, right? If you look at kind of what Aaron has on his side of the field, it, none of the Pokemon really take like water type damage that well, and the sun is also slowly expiring as well. And so, yeah, like there is the potential for Palafin to just kind of sweep in this endgame, considering the switch out right now to make sure that like, Gothitel doesn't just faint from Parasong. So, you know, really safe play here. Protect Arcanine. There's not that much threatening the Palafin as it comes back out. The best Aaron can go for is like a Flamethrower Psychic double up into that slot, reading it, but even then, it's still not taking like that much damage. Yeah, and the Arcanine at this point too, just going for the Protect. So if there is anything targeted specifically into that slot, well, it's not gonna be doing the most eruption yet again. I mean, nothing else to be expected out of the Torkoal of this point and hitting into that Palafin, taking about a third of its health. Nice the Psychic balls. will be protect ca called into the slot though, but still not nearly enough. And as the Parish count goes to zero, that's a double KO in Justin's favor. Yeah, beautiful plays by Aaron, though, really just making sure he's gotten the most value out of these turns of Parish, right? Like, the thing with Parish is your opponents are going to want to protect and make some switches, so even though it is a double knockout, uh, Aaron has maximized the amount of damage that he really could have done. And uh, actually, Palafin did end up taking a little bit more than expected from that double up. In the end, NDD with the Psychic Train and Psychic still does a decent amount of damage. So, it's Murkrow again, though, okay. What's interesting, though, is this time around, Murkrow might be a little bit better positioned because it's like, you know, you can click expand. I, I think the awkward thing still is kind of stalling out the psychic terrain, right? <laughs> like, uh, that was kind of the issue that I'd say Aaron ran into in the previous game. But yeah, I mean, this time around, the Palafin has taken more damage. There's the threat of Brave Bird from the Murkrow side as well. And so I was expecting to see Iron Hands, but I actually think Murkrow might be a little bit better for this end game as they can actually deal damage with Brave Bird this time around. See, well, I will hold my judgment on that one with the Murkrow, but if it can start <laughs> popping off with the Brave Birds, I will be the first one in line to congratulate. That is for sure. But of course, over on Justin's end, making sure the Palafin is set up is going to be the important part. The extreme Ooh. speed, of course, because Murkrow's a flying type, will be able to go for that priority move in the terrain nonetheless, dealing a good amount of damage. The expanding of Forest now, that's going to be enough to take care of the Arcanine. Yeah, like extreme speed into Murkrow normally feels kind of weird, but in this sense, it makes actually a ton of sense because the Murkrow on the opposing end is a Focus Sash variant, not an Eviolite variant. So with that, you break the Focus Sash, which is really, really critical, right? Murkrow, not exactly the bulkiest Pokemon here. And critically, there is no more sunlight or terrain. So yeah. Palafin, so well positioned right now for these jet punches onto both Pokemon. Now, Gothito, not really going to be doing that much damage. So it is going to be a close finish. But of course, you do have the pressure of Fake Out plus Jet Punch right Right now yeah being able as long as you target correctly at this point that is going to be the important thing but two pokemon on each trainer side in the finals of course aaron flame to make it to that game of three and justin flame for that victory protect on the murkrow will be the first thing to fire on through actually the double protect coming out from aaron's end yeah, this is going to be really, really intense. Like, the thing is that the Gothitelle can't Psychic into the Murkrow slot, right? And yeah. so you kind of have to knock out the Armor Rouge. So you could go Jet Punch into, like, the Armor Rouge slot, but then Psychic doesn't go into Murkrow. But if you Jet Punch into Murkrow, Armor Rouge can Expanding Force to maybe KO the Palafin, and then it, it's a 1v1 with Armor Rouge against Gothitelle. I mean, it's the same question. Can Palafin potentially survive that Life Orb Expanding Force here, right? And so, oh, this is going to be pretty intense. But of course, the Protects already came out here. I think, like... One of the scary things is, let's say, like, you know, Justin's considering the Jet Punch into Armor Rouge. If, that, you know, even if you get that knockout, like, if Brave Bird KOs the Palafin, then it's going to be Murkrow versus Gothitelle 1v1. Can Murkrow potentially win that endgame? So, let's see. We are going down to the wire here. There's Jet Punch. No double protect attempts. Armor Rouge survives! It takes it right down. Are and now the Murkrow, me? the only Murkrow to make it into day two, is going to take this KO on to the Palafin. Just Gothitelle remains over on Justin's end. Oh my goodness, there is the armor cannon though. That is not going to be very effective in a Gothitelle. It's not going to get the knockout, but the Gothitelle now cannot KO the Murkrow with Psychic. So Murkrow with a dream here can finish off the Gothitelle with a brave bird. The little bird that could. What? 
We, there is a little bit of doubt on the Murko, especially <laughs> from myself. I'm not going to lie at this point, but just the thing needed to be cleaning this up, going for that other braver Murkrow to clean gets the up final the knockout. Chaos. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to a game three. Sierra, you and I were talking about the Iron Hands adjustment. Aaron's like, nah, it's Murkrow. It it's was always Murkrow. Murkrow. Hey, <laughs> he made it this far with Murkrow. The only Murkrow wow. representative. You got to show the strength and why, you know, Murkrow shouldn't be slept on. Yeah, let's let's talk about that endgame a little bit, right? Because yeah. Palafin actually had the ability to go for a wave crash instead of jet punch. And so kind of the logic behind going for the jet punch there was, okay, I'm a little bit worried about Murkrow on the opposing side clicking Tailwind. If Murkrow sets up Tailwind, then, uh, you know, you can outspeed me with the Arm Rouge and just expanding force and KO me. I think one of the questions I had in that endgame was like, is there any chance Palafin surviving that Life Orb expanding force again? Because if it does, then you can kind of bank off. Yeah, okay, I'll survive. I'll just wave crash you. Uh, and then I'll just jet punch the Murkrow the subsequent turn. But wow, Murkrow ends up pulling off this win. And I think, man, Aaron played that game so well, right? It's like Justin set up the Parasol, but Aaron made like every prediction correct on what Justin would switch into. He maximized the amount of damage that he could get into every single Pokemon. And this Indity plus Torkoal lead is looking so strong. Like we've seen this these you know Pokemon a fair amount, but I've honestly never seen someone lead it the way that Aaron has, and it's it's just yeah. so cool to watch. I think what's really funny too is in that second game, I mean the Parish Song seemed to be so much better set up than it was in that first game, considering yeah. the fact that the Gothitelle just had so much more health that second time around. So there was actually that potential of taking that double KO with the Parish Song because there's no capability of switching out over on Aaron's end. But Aaron really being able to play that still to the maximum to make sure, sure, there's going to be a double KO, but everything is going to go in my favor once I get out of there, especially with some incredible calls and just wow. Game three. I'm so excited. I am so excited as well. So, you know, the question now is, do either player make adjustments, right? Because I feel like the Parasong isn't working that well for Justin. I think Arcanine could be really interesting to lead with because at least you resist the Flare Blitzes from Torkoal. And so if you go with like Gothitelle and Arcanine, kind of like what we saw in Orlando Regionals, you can uh, go for Water Terra immediately and both Pokemon now don't take as much damage from Eruption. There's no Earth Power from the Torkoal either. From Aaron's, and I'm still curious, do you just go with Murkrow once again or do you bring that Iron Hands this time around? And it's a new lead, Iron Hands and NDD! It's Arcanine Gothitelle! <laughs> Switching it up for that grand finale here. Making sure both players are on their toes. Intimidate with that Arcanine. It's gonna drop the attack on the Iron Hands on the other end. I really like the call to go with Iron Hands here because the, the you know what that can do is essentially pressure with Volt Switch now. If you had gone with Torkoal, then you do face the issue of yeah, like Water Terra got the tell and just like Flare Blitz plus Psychics and whatnot, and you can slowly chip away at the entity. And okay, very fast paced turn one. We're just getting right into game three here. We're going for some big attacks. We're going for some big damage here and going to go right into that Ndidi for the one. But splitting the attacks and Psychic doing a good chunk of damage, all things considered, into that Iron Hand. The Assault Vest, of course, is going to be doing the most. That Vol Switch, though, I mean, out a little bit of chip, but most importantly, a pivot here for Aaron. Yeah, pivot being really, really critical. And Torkoal comes out now. Now, the thing is, yes, Gothitelle has Water Terra. Yes, Arcanine resists Fire-type attacks, but Trick Room goes up, and Arcanine took a significant amount of damage on that first turn, right? The Flare Blitz came out, took a decent amount of recoil. If anything, I think that recoil actually hurts it a lot. And so, yeah, like, you do got to be a little bit worried now about how much damage you might take. And so, Justin here, you can see, considering the Protect into Water Terra Trick Room basically reverses speeds, then you can Flare Blitz to try to knock out the Entity slot on the next turn. But, you know, the reality is that, like, Flare Blitz from Torkoal still does a lot of damage. I really like how Aaron distributed damage on that first turn. I think so, so smart to lead with Iron Hands there as well. So I think Justin making kind of a defensive reactionary play, mainly because he has to, but Aaron is free to just go for that Torkoal, Terra, and start clicking Eruption. Yeah, the Eruption, we've already gotten to see, even with resisted hit, how strong this could be with thanks of the Trastalization and the char Charcoal. So looking to do the most damage and really set up in a nice spot for it as the Gothitelle is going to terrestrialize as well, of course, that water type. Make sure that try and make it through the turn and whatever Torkoal is throwing its way. Arcanine, of course, not wanting any of that whatsoever and is going to start the turn off with a Protect. Indeed, to make sure the Torkoal stays nice and safe. No like it going into that Torkoal whatsoever as the eruption. Here it is. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's water got the tell. Yeah, resists it. And I think it did around uh, under 50% that first time around, but it's still meaningful damage, right? And yeah, it is around uh, 71, it looks like there. And so, can take a couple. Got the tell is able to reverse the trick room here, which is critical. Mm -hmm. But 
now it's interesting, right? You had to commit your Terra just to survive that attack, essentially, and ensure that you would be able to reverse the Trick Room. So yeah, Flirt Blitz and Inity pretty safe now. You can go for a Psychic on Slotorkel, and that actually does pretty meaningful damage as well. And so from Aaron's end, you can't really switch out because of the Gothitelle's trap, right? So you could just go for uh, Follow Me here with the Inity, or maybe even something cheeky like a Double Protect. Uh, the Inity here doesn't have something like Helping Hand, for example. And so yeah, uh, Flirt Blitz Psychic here. Flirt Blitz should KO the Inity. Psychic will do very meaningful damage in a Torkoal, and then Torkoal won't be able to do too much in return. Especially now, too, with the Torkoal coming in, that is going to enable the Sun and the boost to the Arcanine's own Flare Blitz, but the Indeedy going for the Protect instead. So making sure the Flare Blitz is not going to be doing anything into that turn, but it is going to make sure that the Torkoal is left open from this Gothitelle now on Justin's end to fire off a Psychic to make sure that if Eruption is clicked again, it's not going to do nearly as much damage. But instead, the Flamethrower, single target though, but it's still going to be doing the max amount of damage it oh. can, but it's not enough to KO that Arcanine. Yeah, huge survival there. I was wondering if that would do enough. And once again, yeah, this Torkoal does not have Earth Power. It's Eruption, Flamethrower, Clear Smog, and Protect. So with the lack of Earth Power there, you don't guarantee the knockout. And this duo was actually pretty hard to break through, right? If Psychic gets a high roll here, it could be a double knockout. So if Aaron's worried about that, you of course could potentially go for that Protect with Torkoal. But uh, Justin being able to reverse that Trick Room was really, really critical. Yeah, and now the Protect is used up. I mean, it's just this other opportunity for Justin to click the same buttons as last time. Like, okay, well, last turn you were safe, but I got the damage down that I needed to. Arcanine, still safe on through it. And now there's potential of the double KO on the horizon this time around. Yeah, and so I really like the mix-up to go with Arcanine here. Like, that plus the Water Terror is the best answer against Torkoal, just kind of spamming these eruptions. So, no Protect here from the Torkoal. There's Flare Blitz. NDD is now down. And Justin is one knockout closer to winning this championship. Of course, that is going to be Recoil. Bringing the Arcanine down just a little and a little closer to being KO'd itself. But now the Psychic does into the, the KO. It's enough to take this Torkoal down. The double KO for Justin. Two Pokemon left for Justin to secure this victory. There is no more Terra on Aaron's side either. Of course, Gothitelle has committed that Water Terra. It is Iron Hands coming back in. Of course, it's already taken a fair amount of damage, and there is the Armor Rouge, but there is no Trick Room. The Iron Hands here cannot go for Fake Out because of Psychic Drain. You could potentially just double up onto Iron Hands right now with Flare Blitz, with Psychic, get that knockout, and then suddenly it's a four versus one. And that's the tricky part in this situation, too. I mean, Iron Hands, it doesn't have the capability because of the Assault Vest to go for a Protect. It doesn't have it whatsoever, so it's so safe to be targeting into that spot. And such a great removal of that Trick Room earlier on by Justin to make sure that the same thing that was his downfall was Aaron being able to just take advantage of that Trick Room once Pokemon was KO'd was a non-existent threat in this game. Flare Bliss is going to be enough for the KO onto the Iron Hands. And now just the Armor Rouge over on Aaron's end. Justin Tang can taste his first regional championship. He is so close. Armor Rouge here will, of course, get the expanding force to pick up the double knockout, but it is now two free switch-ins to Justin. He can really bring in anything, and they'll be able to knock out the Armor Rouge. And so what was so huge here was that ability to kind of reverse the Trick Room. And I really like Aaron's decision to go with the Iron Hands, but hilariously enough, I actually think if it was Murkrow over Iron Hands in this one, the Murkrow would have been able to set up Tailwind at least, and you can you know kind of get expanding force off. Justin did a really good job throughout this course of the set, kind of stalling out, uh, you know, Sun, stalling out Trick Room, reversing Trick Room. It's going to be Palafin. It's going to be Fluttermane coming in. Justin is just one turn away from winning his first regional championship. And Palafin is also so close to claiming yet another consecutive title here in Series 2 VGC. What a match done by both players. But now it's just about clicking the buttons, bring the armor red armor is down real low the shadow ball this should be enough to clean it up justin tang your knoxville regional champion first regional competition that he has competed at and he's taken down the entire thing congratulations justin congratulations to aaron for putting on a phenomenal tournament performance i am so impressed by both of these